fitness is important. But when we're talking about evolution, we use this word in a slightly different way than you're probably used to. Fitness is important. We all want to stay fit, and this comes up a lot when we're talking about evolution. But we have a different definition right now. Evolutionary fitness, now we're talking about an organism's ability to survive and reproduce. In slightly more complicated words, this means your contribution to the next generation. So your how much you contribute with your genetics, i.e. through having children. So we measure evolutionary fitness by how many children you have. This is not referring to how strong, fit, or any of the other ways you might think about it in a collo colloquial terms. Um, let's use a diagram to help us better understand what this means. So here we have two birds, which are pretty much the same, but you can see they have different numbers of children. Our first bird here only has two children, and each of its children also only have two children. So it ends up with four grandchildren. The other bird, however, it has four children, and each of its children also have four children. So it ends up with 16 grandchildren. So we have a very um, big difference in evolutionary fitness here. Because if we go two generations down, our second bird makes a much larger contribution to that population. And we would assume that there's you know, differences amongst all of these organisms. Right now in this diagram, they all look the same, but that's because we're simplifying a lot of ideas. Remember, there's a lot of variation that's already present in the population. We can use another diagram to look at that as well. So here, now we're looking at cats, and we do have a difference, green and blue eyes. So our cat on the top, it has three children, and then it has nine grandchildren. Our green-eyed cat on the bottom, it only has two children and then four grandchildren. So you can see the, the blue-eyed cat on top has a higher fitness. So we can talk about uh, relative fitness and also absolute fitness. So its absolute fitness is three because that's the number of children it has. But when we want to compare populations with different numbers of individuals, it's helpful to talk about relative fitness. So there we take the individual with the highest fitness and that's what we divide everything by. So the individual with the highest fitness would be one by definition, and everything else is gonna have a slightly lower number than one. So for our green-eyed cat, we take two, we divide it by three, and then we get 0.67 for its relative fitness. So whenever we're talking about fitness, it, in regards to evolution, it's always how many children or sometimes grandchildren we have. Different people will use different measures because sometimes it is helpful to look at two generations at once. So can you explain? What is evolutionary fitness and how do we measure it?